This year's Paris to Ancaster race was a total epic, regardless of what distance you were doing. After about a week of almost biblical rains, the, uh, the course, or a lot of the course, was an absolute muddy mess. And love it or hate it, this really added a new dimension to the race itself. And for me, it marked another first. This was the first time in a bike race that I've actually had a crash. And the peculiar thing was, I wasn't actually on my bike at the time. But if you want to find out what I mean by that, you're going to have to keep on watching. In less than 24 hours, I'll be doing the Paris to Ancaster race for the second year running. Uh, the weather at the moment, I don't know if you can even see that. Well, if you can't see it, it's because it's pretty miserable out there. It's it's cold and it's, uh, it's raining. Um, it was exactly like this the day before the race last year. Last year, the day of the race was beautiful. This year, I believe we're getting this again tomorrow. And I gotta be honest, that doesn't bother me greatly. Um, I'm not a you know fantastic athlete. Uh, I'm not going to pretend I am for a minute. But one thing I am is I'm pretty resilient. So the cold and the wet won't really bother me too much. It's a good leveler. You know we're all going to be out there just uh, getting through it and having fun. But uh, I'm going to go into the expo now, pick up my number, and uh, yeah. <laughs> After a few tense moments when I couldn't actually find my name on the list, I did eventually get my number and then I headed home to get a last little bit of rest before the following day's race. Five, four, three, two, one, yeah. Well, best of luck, Alan. You too. Have a good one. <laughs> As you can tell, this is a pretty popular race. It was pretty busy at the start, but I was in no rush to kind of push my way through the crowds. Um, I just decided to roll through the town of St. George and and uh, just warm my legs up a bit because I knew as soon as we made a right turn into the countryside, I was just gonna up the pace and just push it on a little bit more. Thank you. Are you a cyclist? Hi. What's going on, man? Yeah. Oh, I'm just out for a ride. What about you? Good, good. I like your videos. Oh, man. thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. You might be in the next one. Oh, there you go. <laughs> How are you enjoying the ride? Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. Could be dry, huh? Yeah. It wasn't long before you hit your first patch of real mud, and I'd taken off my um, really knobbly cyclocross tires and I'd put on a pair of gravel tires so I was actually fairly happy that I was getting some decent traction on this the soundtrack of the day were squealing brakes and um, the ones that you can hear now they're actually not mine mine weren't totally silent but they weren't nearly as bad as that in last year's race i got stuck in a massive bottleneck of people and i was probably there for 10 or 15 minutes just walking along slowly with my bike and it looks like i'm stuck in a bottleneck here but uh, i was actually able to get through this fairly quickly and get cycling again
So last year right around here was where I had my first gel and I have my gels every 45 minutes. Uh, today I'm at 30 minutes so I'm basically 15 minutes ahead of uh, last year's time so far and feeling really good. Although my bike doesn't sound great, a bit of a crunch, so I'm going to try to ride it through a few clean puddles. It was around this time that I thought to myself, hey, you know what, you're going pretty well. I was able to continue pushing on quite hard. I wasn't fatiguing and my heart rate, which I was keeping a close eye on, wasn't getting out of control at all. And we then hit this farmer's field. And oh man, it was like a scene out of a First World War movie. There, were, there was mud everywhere. There were people strewn all over the course, just trying to find anywhere that they could possibly ride their bikes on and I'd taken this route to the left and it was pretty thick mud and I saw that people on the right were managing to to actually ride so I made my way over to the little track on the right and then that happened there was a very very low fence and I just caught my toe in it and I went down and as I went down I broke the uh, chest mount for my GoPro so from here to the end of the film, I didn't have a forward mounted camera. So every time I wanted to film anything, I had to reach into my back pocket and grab out a GoPro and my hands were all muddy and then my cameras were getting all muddy and uh, the screens were getting all clogged up. And so a lot of the end of the race, um, I don't actually have on film, which is a real shame because there are some incredible features towards the end. This rail trail I was actually really looking forward to because I knew it would give me a chance to, to kind of really focus on getting some speed up and, to, and covering some ground. But what I also found was that because you weren't battling with mud and because you weren't climbing hills, I was able to keep my pulse at quite a decent level and, and get a little bit of recovery in. And I needed that recovery because the last five to eight kilometers are just absolutely brutal. There were two huge long mud chutes, about 500 meters long, with rocks and roots and rivers of mud flowing down them. And then there were quite a few fairly significant climbs, including the climb at the end. It's called Old Martin Road and it absolutely destroyed me. I absolutely loved every single minute and every single meter of that ride. Whether I was trudging ankle deep in mud in a farmer's field or flying down a hill on my newly upgraded bike, I loved it all. And I know that some people struggled with it a bit, but at the end, everybody looked like you know they had achieved something, they had accomplished something, and they had defeated the race. This race held another significance for me. In a couple of days time it's going to be 10 years since I had my cardiac arrest and since I was lying without a pulse on the cold road for 7 minutes. And this race was the first time that I've actually felt like I was competing. I've ridden in races before but I've not felt comfortable to push myself. So this was a huge breakthrough for me. If you were in the race, congratulations. I hope you had as good a time as I did. And if you're just watching the video, I really hope you've enjoyed the video as much as I did making it. And uh, I look forward to seeing it all on the next ride, although maybe not as muddy next time.